Have you ever wondered why you might eat chicken swings, but not swan swings? Leg of lamb, but not leg of kitten? They're both baby animals. Have you ever wondered why you might eat beef stew, but not rat stew? I know, you're working up an appetite. I can see it on your faces. <laughs> Fish soup, but not lizard soup. Hen's eggs, but not pigeon's eggs. Have you ever wondered why you might drink cow's milk, but not pig's milk? And have you ever wondered why you haven't wondered? So the event today um, is organized by uh, Vegan Middle East and the Vegan Society of Kuwait and uh, we are hosting Dr. Melanie Joy of uh, Cannes and she will be talking about carnism which is an invisible uh, belief system. Um, we've been conditioned to basically think and feel like meat is necessary, that meat is natural. I'm very optimistic that uh, Dubai is a, a potential platform for people to get more uh, awareness about veganism in general. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the event. I would like to introduce Dr. Melanie to you. Uh, Dr. Melanie Joy is a Harvard-educated psychologist and professor of psychology and sociology at the University of Massachusetts, Boston and she is the author of the award-winning Why We Love Dogs, Eat Pigs, and Wear Cows. Please welcome Dr. Melanie Joy. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so happy to be here. This is my first time in the Middle East. It's my first time in Dubai, and um, I gave this, not this talk, but an 18 minute of this talk um, about a week ago, on November 29th, to an audience of 800 people with three tiers of seats. And um, it's really nice to be in a nice, intimate gathering where we'll, hopefully we'll have a nice, robust conversation um, at the end of this. So thank you, I'm excited to be here. My life's work as a psychologist, professor, and author has centered around one key theme. It's a theme that's central to our freedom of choice, and therefore to our personal empowerment, and to social and ecological justice. And that theme is making the connection. I'm here to talk about our connection with other beings, and with ourselves, and with our core values, and about the invisible belief system, the ism, that disconnects us from these fundamental aspects of our lives. I'm here to talk about how this ism creates a gap in our consciousness when it comes to some of the most frequent and important choices we make, our food choices, and how this gap causes us to act against our own interests and the interests of others. So I'm here with a goal, which is simply to raise awareness of this invisible ism. There's an invisible belief system that conditions us to eat certain animals. And I named this belief system carnism. They need to use a set of defense mechanisms, social and psychological defense mechanisms, so that humane, rational people participate in inhumane, irrational practices without fully realizing what we are doing. The number of farmed animals, the population of farmed animals is nine times the human population. But, I mean, think about it. How many farmed animals have you seen? Really take a moment to think about this. No matter where you live in the world, your answer will be very similar. Just this week, this month, or this year, how many of these animals have you seen in your lifetime? Those who live to reach market weight are thrown into transport crates and loaded onto trucks bound for slaughter plants. At the slaughter plant, the birds are dumped from their crates, then roughly snapped upside down into moving shackles by their fragile legs. They are then pulled across a blade which slices their throats, causing blood to pour from their necks. Calves on dairy farms are dragged away from their mothers and violently killed, all so that humans can have the milk instead. This is the number of animals that were killed since I opened this slide. Eating animals is not simply a matter of personal ethics. It is the inevitable end result of a deeply entrenched, oppressive system. In this way, eating animals is a social justice issue. 
We care about animals. We care about justice. And we care about the truth. And carnism depends on our not caring, and the entire system is built on deception. So carnism is really a house of cards. It's a vulnerable system that needs a strong fortress to protect itself from its very own proponents, us. I mean, why else would we go through all the psychological acrobatics if not because we care? And one of the myths about veganism is that veganism is not a powerful social movement. And this is a myth. Because the good news is that despite what mainstream carnistic culture would have us believe, the vegan movement, which is the counterpoint to carnism, is actually growing. It is thriving and mushrooming all over the world. I've given this presentation on five continents, and everywhere I go, I see more and more people um, and meet with people in positions of leadership waking up and saying no to carnism. My goal is really to raise awareness of carnism internationally um, because I, I really believe that until people recognize carnism and step outside of the system, we will never have an objective conversation about eating animals. And we need that objectivity in order to start making choices that are compassionate and healthful. So what's next for me is a continuation of what I've been doing, which is um, uh, speaking, um, touring, and running the projects that we run at Beyond Carnism, my organization, um, in order to raise awareness of carnism around the world.